Welcome, everyone, to the L7C podcast. We are back with the final section of the 2023 Anime Element Tournament. We are on the Earth Division. This is the last spot for the final four. We already got three. We got the Fire Division, Yamamoto. We got Jim B from One Piece. We got Laxus from Fairy Tail. Only one spot left in the final four. And then next week, you will hear the final foreign championship. Uh, so we got the crew. We got Byron, Andrea, and Nikki uh, individually. Byron, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. Can't complain. Awesome. Andrea, how are you doing today? I'm doing good despite a wild day at work, but I'm good. I'm good. Nikki, how are you doing today? Man, we're doing good now that we got food and water in me. Uh, say less. Say less. Well. Guys, let's get into it. There is just, again, one spot left. We are at the Earth Division. Uh, Nikki, when you look at this Earth Division, as we're going to go through it, what were some of your thoughts when you saw some of these matchups? Half of these people are scrubbish. Mm -hmm. Oh, That's what I thought. Half of them were scrubbish. I'm sorry to say it. Mm -hmm. But... Nah, the second rounds were kind of tough. I'll give them that. The second round matchups were the toughest. But those first rounds, I didn't do any research. I just literally looked and I was like, okay, they're winning, they're winning, they're winning, and they're winning. Fair enough, fair enough. Andrea, uh, Byron, did you guys have any thoughts about this Earth Division? I know it's the last division of the tournament. Um, this was not as tough as the Lightning Division. Um, but like Nikki said, like that second round, I'm still like, don't know who I'm choosing. <laughs> Andrea? I, yeah, I'm just a little lost in the sauce for this division because I don't recognize most of these characters. I haven't watched most of these shows. So I'm just a little like, mm, we'll see how it goes. I do think um, it's pretty obvious who would win in most of the first rounds. <laughs> um but I could I could be mistaken. I could be giving, you know, a show a little bit or their universe a little bit more props than they deserve. So I am going to be piggybacking off of y'all for the most part. So please allow me to not go first. <laughs> Fair enough. You already know I'm going first. <laughs> oh, that's true. Thank God. Oh. Uh, probably not, because Andrea said don't allow her to go first. So she's probably going to go first. Right. Um. Tradition. Byron goes first. Captain first. Um, so before we do start, because Nikki, you said this one wasn't as hard as the other divisions. What was the hardest? What were the hardest? Like, if you had to rank hardest to weakest to do, which divisions was the hardest for you? It would go for me, it was lightning, mm -hmm. then fire, mm -hmm. and last was water. And I mean, this one is definitely last, last, but like out of those three, it was lightning, fire, water. Okay. Uh, Byron? Yeah, I agree. Lightning, fire, water. Okay. Andrea? I, I agree as well. You know, it's kind of funny just for a uh, thing. Our lightning one was the shortest of the three we've already done. I know. Really? We, we all seem to like kind of really agree mm -hmm. more so, even though it was the most difficult for us. Um, And I think that's why. Yeah, so Byron, let me, as I was um, doing something, which I'll announce at the end of this thing. So the Lightning one, and this is with like the intro and outro with the podcast. It was only mm -hmm. 36 minutes combined. Wow. And then Water, which had all six of us, was only 40 only. It was 41 minutes. Now, the Fire one, the very first one, that was almost an hour. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So. We did go on some tangents on that one. I'm pretty sure yeah. we started sending shots. <laughs> yeah. We started sending shots at Sasuke. I'm sure. Most likely. I think the other thing was, at least for me, since this is my first time do like actually being physically present for a March Madness, like getting used to the format, I think for Lightning, and y'all can disagree with me, I feel like we were more just bold faced, like this is our choice. X and Y is Y, and boom, it was like move on. Whereas the first one, I felt like I know. I was over explaining basically all of my choices. So. Yeah, I, I do feel like the, the one that had the most debate per se was that elite eight of sailor um, Mercury and um, 
Jim B. I feel like those were that was the most debated one. And then Nikki came in with the debate of the century for his yep. guy. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's what swayed me because that definitely was probably going to pick Sailor Mercury. But then when um, Nikki talked up Jim Bay, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with Jim Bay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm I. sorry. I was not letting Jim Bay lose that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was not hey, that's, happening. That's I had to run. Disrespect for Nikki would have been too great. That's what, it, that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's what it's all about. But let's see. Let's go through it. Um, we have the strongest earthbender in the Avatar world. Mm-hmm. Toph versus Jirai of Fairy Tale. Byron, who do you got in this one? Um, I think it comes down to hand to hand combat. I know uh Toph can basically bend earth, which Jura is a earth magic user. Mm-hmm. Um but when I think when it, if he is able to get close, I think it will come down to hand to hand combat, and he's a master um, hand to hand combatant. And I don't think to- Toph could hang with him, so I'm picking Jura. Andrea, I'm also picking Jura against my like you know um, soft spot for Toph. Toph is freaking amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, she, like you said, is the greatest earthbender um, in the Avatar universe. She also invented metal bending. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know if that would be a factor in this fight. Because if she could bend metal, if she still had her space rock, you know, weapon that is, you know, from what I understand, Jura wouldn't be able to really do anything with it because their magic is um, specific to Earth. But I mean, if Toph can bend metal when she's an earthbender. I'm sure maybe the uh, limits of magic would extend out to metal as well. I'm not sure. Um, but I do think just in terms of scaling, unfortunately, our Avatar, the last Airbender characters are just a little, if not one league behind, maybe even two, depending on the matchup. Fair enough. Nikki? Yeah, I gave it to my boy Jura. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, he uses earth magic, which Toph can obviously like bend. Mm-hmm. But like Byron said, it comes down to hands. And as you guys have learned from the series of podcasts, if you haven't watched it, One Piece is all about hands. They fight every single episode. There's not an episode that goes by where you mean some fairy fist- tale? Fairy tale? Or, yeah, fairy tale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, One Piece is next in the next right. matchup. <laughs> yeah. But like, I have to give it to Jura. I just think he's too big body compared to her. Yeah. So. Objectively, I was going to give it to Jura, but because obviously he's going. But I do, since it's already been decided and my vote won't matter, I was just going to throw a vote to Toph just because if we do it like real NCAA, no Avatar person made it out of the first round. Right. Yeah. Like they're, uni- like if you're doing it like the whole, like real NCAA March Madness, when you look at like whose universe is advanced, like none of them have made it out the first round. And I've, and I haven't voted for any of them, so I was like, "Yeah, it's the last one. Jura should win, so I'm gonna just throw it there." But objectively, no, nah, she would lose. I mean, yeah. top would top would lose, so that's why I was like, yeah. "But that's I was crazy." Of throwing my vote that way as well, and but since there's only four of us here today, I'm glad <laughs> I didn't because then we would have ended up with a tie, and that's yeah. No. Then we have to go into deliberate. But yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, Andrea, I mean, I think you love that world more than we do. Like your thoughts on none of them. Not even not advancing to the second round. I think they were just bad matchups. I think the matchups were bad because honestly, like I feel like I could make more of a uh, argument of top beating somebody in the next. Um, oh my gosh, in the next battle, um, is it Soul? Oh, she's terrible. Yeah, like <laughs> I like I feel she's like she's broken it, her. <laughs> yeah, so like I think Top had the best chance of advancing. Mm-hmm. But she got shitty matchups. Yeah. A shitty matchup. Yeah, I agree. Because I think looking at that, Toph would beat Soul. She'd beat Risho. Mm-hmm. I think she'd beat Louis Armstrong, too. Louis Armstrong, that's a, it's a good... I'm going to be a little debatable. I can see that. On the fire side, I, I truly do not... Besides maybe Mustang, I don't know who Zuko, Zuko would, would be. Beat. Right. Yeah. And then on the water side... Besides I guess, Patty from Zatch Bell? Yeah, I was gonna say I could see Katara beating Patty. Right. Is it's it was just 
unfortunately their their verse doesn't quite expand and compare to these other verses um doesn't mean it's bad it doesn't mean it's worse freaking love avatar the last airbender with my whole heart Mm -hmm. um and i'm sad that none of them made it past the first round well let's go to next match crocodile from one piece first soul marin from black clover uh nikki how do you see this fight going listen i've got a lot of love for black clover Mm -hmm. i think they do outside of one piece they do the best like universe building like everyone gets love Mm -hmm. in that show she is cannon fodder (laughs) <laughs> she, she's getting, she doesn't stand a chance against Croc. She's not touching Crocodile. Crocodile is smoking her. Andrea? Um, again, I know basically nothing about both of these shows, um, but kind of reading the general synopsis and how uh, One Piece just seems, at least so far, like outside looking in, just seems to be just top tier across the board, even if they aren't like a main main character. So I, my general vote was going to be for Crocodile. Byron. Yeah. I'm picking Crocodile too. Um, he can turn his body into the sand, mm-hmm. which is awesome. And then um, according to the one piece fandom wiki, uh, he has a, a secret hook that's made of poison. Um, oh, they show as far as, on the show, on the show, okay. Mm-hmm. As far yep. as I know, um, Soul Mirren is probably not um, resistant to poison, so I got a crocodile with yep. one in this one. I agree. I mean, I think that's way too much for her to handle. Also, she's brash. She rushes into battle. I mean, I Nikki, you gotta have to explain why she just, like, hates men, because that's literally on her biography. Yeah, she's in the all-woman squad. Um... There's some backstory on her. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure there's like a valid reason why she hates men, but she's just a part of the all women squad. Mm-hmm. And like her captain is one of those like anti men, but she's um. in love with she's in love with Asta's captain, okay. my boy Yami. Mm-hmm. Shout out Yami. Yami. So like, yep. Yeah. I don't really care for her. So I, I mean, couldn't tell you. <laughs> and then one of Crocodile's accolades, no matter when it was, I mean, he has a win over the main character of that show. He has a win over Luffy. He's got two wins. Two wins. And- Oh yeah, they fought like three times in the Alabasta arc. Wow. And he only he only won because Luffy, you know, main character plot armor. Mm-hmm. Like that show right. would have been over if Crocodile, if Luffy doesn't have uh, main character plot armor. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. You got Louis Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist versus Diane Seven Deadly Sins. Nikki, I know you do like Seven Deadly Sins. Am I right? I do. I've seen all six seasons. Even How are you feeling about shit. this matchup with? Diane in the is this the first person from seven seven deadly sins? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First, she's the only one that has like no, we had guilt no, 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 we had, we had guilt. Yeah, in the uh, Oh yeah, I forgot guilt under the night. Yeah. So Nikki, how are you feeling about this matchup? I love both these shows. Mm-hmm. Um full medals in my top five yeah. of all time animes. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna give it to Diane strictly because one, she's a giant. Mm-hmm. Two, she's got a wider range of spells than what Louis can generate with his transmutation circles and stuff like that. (laughs) Like this is another one of those where just like avatar, the last airbender, like (laughs) full metal doesn't compare to some of these other universes. So I had to give it to my girl, Diane. That is a good point as well, because full metal also never, well, has not made it out of the first round. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. The avatar thing. Good on you. Uh Andrea. I am also not familiar with Seven Deadly Sins. Um, I've seen too many clips of the main character being a little too pervy for my taste. So I'm just like, <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, um, Meliodas? <laughs> yes. Yes. Anyway. Um and I love Full Metal Alchemist. It is, like Nikki said, also in my top five or top ten. I've never officially ranked my favorite shonen anime, but like I adore it. However, even within their own universe, uh, Louis Armstrong was taking some L's during the show. <laughs> so um, I'm guessing, I do know that Diane is probably one of the more prominent like side characters. So 
based on that fact, I kind of was leaning towards Diane anyway, but Nikki's, you know, reasoning is like, yep. Okay. I picked, I backed the right horse. All right. Cool. Uh, Byron. I also have Dion uh, taking this one. She is a giant who has a giant ass hammer and she can basically use creation magic, um, which can basically move the earth. So I got her taking this one. I don't, I don't disagree. It's just a wrong matchup for Mr. Armstrong. I mean, I personally don't even think Diane is that sweet, sweet. But again, like we've talked about, matchups matter. Mm-hmm. And then this one, all right, let's just get this out of the way. Pika's beating Rishio. It's, no. That's that's easy. Yeah. Yes. Bro, I had to look up who Rishio was. Again. <laughs> right. same. Same. As soon as I saw same. him, I said, all right. He's the same guy when they were um when they were fighting after oh, they were getting screwed in that matchup too by that shitty ass owner of their team, and then Tagoro, yep. the owner. And then that's yep. the one where Kuabar was the last person. It's like, damn, he's about to lose. And then he a sister pulled up, and then Kuabar got all the strength and knocked his ass out the ring, and it was yep. over. <laughs> the power of love. <laughs> oh yeah, gosh! Like he, he, like we were looking at this thing. He might be the weakest person in this whole tournament. Oh, 100 percent, one hundred percent. Like I, yeah. Tara's beating Risho. Zuko's probably beating Risho. Like, yeah. I guess the only arguments potentially you could argue about the people from Zatch Bell, but yeah, yeah, he's the weakest person this turn. He's up there. All right, this is now. These ones get interesting. You got Jira from Fairy Tale versus Crocodile from One Piece. Byron, who you got in this one? This is the one I struggled the most with. I think I'm going to have to go Crocodile because he has um, he can touch you with his right hand and just basically sap all the water out of you and that feels a little too OP to me. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Uh, Nikki? This one was tough. Mm -hmm. Real tough. Like Jura is one of the ten wizard saints which Mm -hmm. is like the top, you know, Magic people not. in fairy tale, but Sir Crocodile, we're gonna put some respect. They do men, they do call him Sir Crocodile. Okay, show oh, too. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> put some respect on him. I gotta give it to Crocodile on this one because he's got the sand sand fruit, which, mm-hmm. like I've said, for Ace and Anel, his body is pure sand, mm-hmm. and he, like Ace, has got it to the point where he doesn't have to like see you or know you're even coming to mm-hmm. activate his ability like he got slashed in the head by Dof- Don, Quix- Don Quixote Doflamingo we're gonna mm-hmm. put respect on his name too got sliced in the head from behind didn't see him had no clue he was coming he was still straight I gotta give it to Crocodile on this one all right Andrew I was also leaning towards Crocodile I just I had a feeling I don't know maybe it's just I Hands are more tangible tangible to me than magic, so that was why I was leaning that way. But again, hearing Byron and Nikki is like, okay, I'm comfortable picking with what I picked, going with what I picked. Yeah, I think with these things throughout, depending if your powers are just supremely stronger than everyone else, it's like a Yamamoto, but most of these like powers, it's like, all right, if we're even in our abilities. What's the mm-hmm. differentiating factor? Like intelligence, speed, reflexes, hand to hand combat. Like when all the weapons and special magic don't work and we have to go face to face, who's winning that mm-hmm. matchup? And I think Crocodile's a better fighter than Jura. You know, Crocodile going. Man. Nikki, you're on um, this, uh, this down here. These are all your people, man. Now you got Diane versus. Um, Pika, who you got here? This one is the one I debated about the most Mm -hmm. because I really like both. Not that I care for Pika because he's a villain, but Mm -hmm. like Pika's abilities are OP. And so here's my thing. Diane can control Earth. She can Mm -hmm. control the ground. Pika's ability is he controls stone Mm -hmm. and he can he can control all the stone like in the Dress Rosa arc, 
he becomes a giant, like way taller than Diane, way bigger. He basically just engulf the island becomes him. And then not to mention, Pika has full body hockey. Mm -hmm. And in that show, for people that have used the full body hockey, it's only two that they've showed. He's mm -hmm. got the tougher one than Virgo, who is also a part of the Don Quixote family, which is what Pika is. He's a part of that. He's their army leader. Mm -hmm. I have to get this one was tough. I went Pika because Diane don't really be doing much by herself. Mm -hmm. like, if it's not King with her, it's always somebody else helping her in these fights. And mm -hmm. like, yes, Diane can control the earth, but I don't think she's really doing much to Pika's hockey. Fair enough. It's looking like they had interesting on the on the height when she's normal size she's like 5'5 five, five, but she can get up all the way to 30 feet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is crazy but okay um, but Nikki brings up a good point of what are these characters doing in this one on one setting if they're mostly a team player and they're outside of that setting which I think that hindered the sailor girls because they yes. do fight as a team mostly Yes. So that's a good thing on Nikki bringing that up. So going with Pika. Andrew, what do you... This is giant on giant. These are two big people. Well, um, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, I guess. And it sounds like <laughs> Pika's putting Diane down. It That's what it sounds like. Okay, okay. Byron? I got Pika. Um, like Nikki said, Diane is more part of a team, the Seven Deadly Sins, um, which is like the one of the most powerful groups in Seven Deadly Sins. Um, so I don't remember a time where she's fought one on one, and I know Pika probably has in One Piece. So I think <clears throat> his ability to fight one on one gives him the edge over Dion. Okay. Well, this is the last Elite Eight. This is the last spot in the final four. You got, this is the first time in the bracket we have two people from the same universe fighting for this final four spot. Crocodile, Mr. Sir Crocodile, uh, versus Pika, both from One Piece. Got to go to the One Piece expert. Nikki, who comes out on top in this match? Yes, sir. This one is a tough one because... We technically haven't seen Crocodile use hockey in the show, mm -hmm. but he mm -hmm. has survived getting sliced by the number one swordsman in that show, which is Dracul Mihawk. Mm -hmm. He's the top swordsman. Zoro still isn't uh, touching Dracul Mihawk, even at this point in the show. Wow. Mm -hmm. Y'all get. He used to beef with Shanks. Like him and Shanks used to fight all the time. Mm -hmm. And that says something because Shanks is basically like. He might as well be the top character in that show. If mm -hmm. you've seen the new arc, you've seen what he did to somebody who was just fighting Kaido and Big Mom in the show. You mm -hmm. see what he does. One shots him. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So, like, Crocodile's so. got them hands. He's fought all of the top people in Marine Ford, which is the arc where he survives the slashes from Dracul Mihawk, who has a... His sword is hockey, basically. Like he forged his sword into a black blade. That's how strong his hockey is. Didn't cut crocodile. So that shows that crocodile does have hockey. And mm -hmm. if you read, if you're privy to the manga, mm -hmm. not many people are obviously, you know, 1079 just dropped. So <laughs> wow. you see the crocodile is a real player. Mm -hmm. He's a real player. His bounty. He's one of, 10 people they've shown that has over an a billion dollar bounty. Damn. In that show, like spoilers, sorry. I have to give this one to Crocodile because I think he can fight with Pika. Like Pika's got the stone fruit, but Crocodile has the sand sand fruit. And Crocodile is Logia. That's the thing with Pika. He's not truly Logia. He is Paramecia. Side note. What's it? What's so the difference? Because that's what I want to ask yeah, you. There's three types of double fruits. 
there's Logia, which is basically elemental users. And okay. they just become that element, passes or attacks pass through them. All their attacks are based on that element. And then Paramecia, or I'll go Zoan. Zoan is animals. They can transform into whatever animal that they their fruit is. And everybody has three forms, like their human form, their full-on beast form, and then their like man-beast form. Mm-hmm. Chopper's an exception. We won't include them. And then Paramecia, that's just kind of all the non-elements and non-animals. Mm-hmm. So, like, okay. for example, Don Quixote do Flamingo, who is Pika's boss, mm-hmm. who is the main character that Luffy fights in the Dressrosa arc, mm-hmm. he has a Paramecia fruit, and he has a string string fruit. Okay. And he just produces, like, strings, basically, out of nowhere. Luffy is rubber. He's a Paramecia fruit. I was about to say, like, with Luffy... Because I only watched like the first episode. Yeah. Of- it was like I know he had the was it the rubber or the yeah. gum fruit, whatever. The gum, gum, yeah, the gum fruit. A yeah, he's a rubber. Yeah, yeah. Got you, got you. he's a paramecia, and so is Pika. So like, Pika's attacks can just go through crocodile. And then Byron brought it up. Crocodile can suck the water out of anybody he touches. And then his right hook is poison. And the only reason Luffy didn't die is because Nico Robin, who was the number two in Crocodiles, Sir Crocodile's Baroque Works group, she gave Luffy the antidote to survive. Mm. I have to give the dub to Crocodile because he's just a better, he's just, I just think he's more powerful and better than Pika is in that show. But it does come down to hockey, so you could make the argument that hockey is what truly matters, mm-hmm. but I don't think Pika can survive Crocodile's poison and or the ability to like literally get sucked dry basically fair enough one to crocodile byron captain this is this is for a spot at the final four man who you got i mean nikki eloquently said it i I got crocodile i think like i said i think that ability to basically suck all the water out of you is op and he can basically turn to sand anytime he wants so like nikki said attacks will pass through him and i don't know how you get past that so i got a crocodile my hero enthusiast, Andrew, your vote can decide this spot for the last spot of the final four. Who you got? I am also going with Sir Crocodile. I mean, they don't give him the title of Sir for fucking nothing. So yeah. that's where we're going. And with that, Crocodile takes the last spot in the final four. You got it's all set. Got Yamamoto, Jim B, Lactus, and Crocodile. That's the final four. Uh, Nikki, how do you feel with, and looking at the Elite Eight, half of the Elite Eight was One Piece. How do you feel about that? Man, I feel good. And I know I had to get some One Piece characters through. I would have got rang out by that community if nobody (laughs) was making it. But man, these are some interesting matchups. We'll see. Um, Spoiler. I love you, Jean Bay. I don't know if he's surviving what that man is. Not a Bleach. chance. No. Yeah, not a chance I, in no. hell. No. <laughs> no. It's all going to come down to <laughs> the next week. Crocodile versus <laughs> Yeah, not a chance in hell. Um, Byron, how are you feeling about you looking at this Elite Eight? You had four from One Piece, which is amazing. You had two mm-hmm. from Fairy Tale, and then you had one from Bleach and one from Sailor Moon. How are you feeling about that Elite Eight that went to the final and then the final four? I mean, from just looking at the Elite Eight to the final four, One Piece has some very powerful characters. Um, it gets me interested to maybe restart my journey into mm-hmm. One Piece, but those 800 episodes is daunting. I will I say, know, you can always, you're, you're, you can you're always stop, and, stop and go. I mean, when Whenever one of your animes aren't going, you could just hop That's in true. and so and then obviously to the female anime voice of the podcast, Andrea. How are you feeling then with this Elite Eight that only Sailor Mercury was the only female to make the Elite Eight? I mean, it makes me sad, but out of how many female characters in shonen anime are really that 
on that top tier level outside of like being almost a main character? Like how, how mm. many just in general, plus then when we narrow it down to like elemental users, mm-hmm. there's not very many to even pull from. So like statistically, this is not surprising. Um, I'm glad Sailor Mercury made it to the Elite Eight, um, but it's it's not surprising to me. And it's not like, unfortunately, I could really make an argument for the few female characters that were on here in some of the matchups that they had. You fought for Mercury, though. That Elite Eight was... That was coming down to it. Was it her was. And, it and was. Me. That you were her biggest champion. I will oh, not absolutely. That. I'm not going to let a 14 year old with a 300 IQ not make it at least to the elite eight. Fair enough. Um, since they were not on here, how differently, depending on the region, because he purposely left them off, how differently would it have been if Naruto characters were allowed in this tournament? I fire. I don't think fire changes. No, no, I don't think fire changes. I think with the earth, because I'm assuming yeah. we would put Gara in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. That Gar. I felt like it would come down between Gara and Crocodile. Oof. Ooh, that's a matchup. That would be yeah. a matchup, San versus San. Yeah. But then yeah. here's the thing: I watched the death battle. And they had Gara lose to Toph. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I don't know. But they gave her the metal bending. So like, okay. Well, that's, that's, and that's what I was wondering. It's like, if we throw in metal bending, maybe. But um, <laughs> I was also thinking for uh, lightning, the uh, Raikage. <laughs> the Raikage. Um, Ooh, I wonder, yeah. honestly, because we see Kakashi use a lot of earth. Uh, not, I was about to say earth bending. Um, oh my god, earth. Well, lightning, lightning is his affinity, well, yes, yeah, but he also has an earth affinity because we see him do like mud type stuff all the time. So, I'm wondering which one we would have put him in because that's the other reason I believe that you know they were left out of this entire thing. Mm-hmm. Well, also in conjunction with the fact we have a whole separate thing talking about Naruto characters all of the time, but mm-hmm. it would be hard to classify them in one particular spot because they basically they all use are capable of using different elemental types of ninjutsu, most of them. Yeah, that's that's true, yeah. because even, like, speaking with him or other, like, people, like Agara, which Gara, are we going to do it before he loses Shikaku? Like, he would have had a whole mm. tail. Be- like, are we giving, like, the full power Kakashi that he's walking around here with lightning blading Susanoo's? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's the thing with Naruto, is everybody has, like, multiple abilities there's mm-hmm. their chakras whatever bullshit they have you know, yep. their eyes or they have an animal in them because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. like i got even, i got one water, water mizukage i mean mizukage could have made some noise i was gonna yeah. put the fuck the mizukage i was gonna put a, a lord second in there oh, yeah. oh the second oh, 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 I'm, I'm thinking, thinking about he's the greatest water oh, yeah i'm thinking water. about people that's who are true. alive that's ooh. He'd be a good one in water. Mm-hmm. I'd put Kakashi in lightning mm-hmm. just because that's his main thing. Fire changes nothing. Earth would yeah. be interesting with Gara, but like you said, if we're not giving him Shikaku, I don't know how much the Gara's right. gonna do, you know? Sure. Yeah, that's true. And I know I know Byron's a big Gara fan. So I do, I do love me <laughs> some Garo. An interesting matchup I just thought of though. Jimbe versus Kisame. Oh. I was thinking about oh. that. As you guys said that he was kind of like, I don't Ooh. know if he was another shark man or another fish dude. And I was like, that sounds like the Kisame of One Piece. Oh like, that's man. What that mm-hmm. like. I think oh. that'd be a very interesting Nikki, how matchup. How would you feel about that matchup? Oh, that would be a matchup. Because then it's coming down to Gene Bay's hockey. Versus mm-hmm. Kisame's sword. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. Kisame's sword won't do much against Jinbei because mm-hmm. he's got no chakra to suck out. Yeah, right. And, I mean, they tank swords and guns in that show, no problem with hockey, because that's mm-hmm. the thing. Ho- One Piece is broken because of the hockey. Mm-hmm. Hockey trumps all in that show. Fuck your... So devil. hockey is the eyes of One Piece. Yes, mm. the stronger okay. hockey okay. person is always going to win. So, ooh, that's a good matchup. But Jean Bay is a fish man. Like he is, 
he's got gills. He can breathe on water and mm-hmm. on land. So like Kisame's water attacks, like when he does that big globe against Guy, mm-hmm. like that's mm-hmm. not affecting Jinbei. Jinbei's swimming through that. And yeah. Jinbei also has the power. Side note, he could communicate with um all water animals. Yep. Like he pulls up, mm-hmm. he summons a bunch of whale sharks. Like he t- himself is technically a whale shark fish man. But yeah, I gotta give it to Gene Bay on that one still. That's, Just because I don't think Kisame can has enough answers. Do, yeah. Yeah. Like his semi hata isn't doing much against Gene Bay's hawk. That's a good one. So like even just going back to lightning too, you throw in Killer being the Rakage. I mean, uh-huh. I don't know how many of these people are taking a Lariat. Uh, mm, true. Yeah. The lightning's the most interesting one. If we throw Kakashi and especially A in there, mm-hmm. A is doing some damage yes. in that round. Yeah. 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 I mean, this, he's dodging Amaterasu's and catching a manga Kishan. Like, he, he's. And he takes pain. He, he could take some pain. Mm-hmm. Yes, he, he cut his own arm off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> and wanted the fight still. Like, yeah. A's a real one. That's interesting. But we got the final four set. This is exciting. Our first anime elemental tournament. So next week, final four, crown of champion. We'll do some comments. Uh, Nikki, we'll start off with you, man. As always, let us know what you think in the comments. I'm I'm intrigued to hear it. Is anybody going to fight my One Piece arguments on this one? Got two of them in the final four, man. Good on you. Ooh, Andrea. Um, you know, thank you so much for listening to us. Uh, we appreciate the support. We do want to hear y'all's thoughts. Maybe you just totally disagree with us. Um, Maybe you can think of other people that would have been added into the different uh, elemental categories that would have sh- shook things up, or maybe, maybe, maybe we're just not thinking of the Avatar or Full Metal universe like in depth enough to scale it properly. And I would like to know what y'all think. Um, and again, we appreciate your support. We hope you join us ne- next week when we uh, crown the champion. Byron. This was another fun episode of the Anime March Madness. Definitely looking forward to that Final Four. I kind of know who I'm leaning towards, but I definitely want to do some more research just to make sure it's the right person that wins. Right. Um, Ditto to what everyone said. Thank you, everyone, for listening to L7C Podcast. This has been a month-long journey. It's been a lot of fun, our first one doing it. We got the Final Four coming up next week in april and then we'll see what the next anime thing is coming i might have something i'm gonna talk to the people on after this recording get their thoughts on it and this came from a fan's idea so um that might be our april thing to go with what goes on in april but with that being said this is the l7c podcast signing out Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.